Jixer Bill here. Bill Arrington is my actual name. I go by Jixer Bill on uh, the forums. Uh, today we're going to be going over how to turn copper tubing into jackets. Alright guys, uh, this is Dave Walker here. Uh, my real name is Tommy. Uh, today I'm at Bill's house and we're going over his uh, jacket making dies. Some of these dies he made on his lathe. There's one die that he did not make, and we'll get to that one later. Um, this is just one way of doing it. This is the way he's done it. This is his personal collection, his personal use. And everything that I've seen so far, very impressed. I would like a set of dies. But unfortunately for me, he said if I wanted a set, I'm going to have to make it myself. It's just time consuming and, you know, he's pretty well backed up on a lot of stuff. So, these probably won't make it out on the market as of yet. But at any rate, let's go ahead and get started. Bill, tell me a little bit about these dies. What kind of material did you make them out of? And approximately, like like this first set of dies here, what, did this, what does this one do? This is a core making die. And uh, I got a, made a mold to cast my soft lead cores. And of course, this is just a, what they call a squirt die. Uh, you put the core in there after you make it, and uh, the excess lead squirts out the three holes. Uh, the holes are a lot smaller down there, and you can't see it on a film on a camera probably. But uh, you just you just stick your core in there, and then the, the top bottom punch goes in here. Top punch will be in your press, and uh, when they come together. You had a predetermined whatever weight you want. The excess die, excess lead squirts out, and then uh, once you raise the ram back up, it, it pops the core out there, and then you have a you have a core just like this right here made. Now these cores right here, you took an existing mold and drilled it out so that you can actually cast. Yes, yes, that's why you still see the drill bit mark on the tip of it. I just right drilled there. them out to the size I wanted. And then you just drop them out of the mold, and as you explain. This right here is the end product once you go through the die. And how much uh, approximately is the grainage of these? Uh, about 85, I think. About 85 grains. Okay. And basically what we're doing with these is making jacketed bullets. And these are more particular towards the 9mm? Yes, correct. 9mm. Alright. And from my understanding, we'll go ahead and set these out of the way. That's pretty cool. Now, what kind of tooling did you use on those? That's The steel is 4140 pre-hard. Everything's 4140 pre hard. And you turn that out on your lathe and threaded? Yes. Okay. Make both punches. Cool deal, cool deal. Now, to make a jacket, my understanding you're just using this um, soft copper tubing. Is Correct. this like waterline or? Utility grade is what it's called. Uh, I don't know if it's type in or what type it is, but it just says utility grade. It's uh, 0 .023 uh, wall thickness. Okay. And you just take that out, straighten it out. Yes. And this would be the, after it's straightened. Right, you just roll it out and straighten it out best you can. Okay, can you talk us through um, how you cut this to length? Sure, sure. A little, this is just a little Harbor Freight mini cutoff saw. Okay. I've got one of those myself. I've rigged up a little little jig right here and I take a piece of copper tubing feed it in here to this stop till it hits a stop and of course pull it down and cut it off remove the stop and just shove the piece you cut out back it up put it back in again push it up against it and just cut again every once in a while you'll have to stop and blow a little bit of a little bit of copper filings out of there but it, it works pretty, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it gets the job done. And this would be the... End product. The yes. end product that you mm -hmm. cut off? Yes. And so what's left to be done with this? Uh, we'll have to run them on an inside and outside uh, deburring tool, just to get rid of all the, the little slag and stuff that's in there after it's been cut. Okay. And And that's... Yeah, that's what well, from mean. what I'm looking at, this one right here, it's already been chamfered and deburred. Yes, they've been cut. They're all cut to 0 0.750, three quarters of an inch in length. It's 0 0.375 copper tubing, three eighths. Okay. 
And so that brings us actually to the next set of dies, right? Yes, round over die. The round over die. And exactly what process is going on there? Uh, of course, this is the ejector punch. In the bottom of this die, there's a it's about a 45 degree round over in the bottom of it all the way around. And uh, you just put, put your piece of copper tubing in there, and this is your top punch. And it goes over top of it. And you just, when you apply the pressure then in the bottom, it just it rounds the bottom of the copper tubing over. And then on the upstroke then, that right there ejects it. So you have something that looks like this. Let me get That's what comes out. Let me zoom in on that right quick. And that, that pretty much starts the formation of the that's, cup. That's your first die, yes. That's your first die. Same tool in 4140 pre 4140 hard. 4140 pre hard, yes. And just in um, up close view, that's the profile. And you say this is the um, top punch? Top punch, yes. Okay. And this they're specific to, to the tubing, uh, so to speak. If you want to go with a longer jacket or a shorter jacket, you would actually have to make make this shorter or longer. Uh, if not, it won't it won't round it over far enough. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, your ejector punch will actually come up through the middle of it, and you got to take your press all apart to get it back out. <laughs> I know, trust me. <laughs> but this would be hint. Edit that out. <clears throat> Dang. And once you get this far, this is where you start to anneal your cases. Uh, after we after we round them over, uh, then you'll run it through a draw die, and uh, it actually it's just a two two pieces here, and you actually run it through the draw die, which will draw it down from point three seven five to point three four seven. Uh, and after that step, then we'll clean them up, then we'll anneal them. And you and the annealing is very important because it. Yes, if you don't anneal them, <clears throat> your next step is a bottom flattening punch, and they will stick on that punch if you don't anneal them. Uh, that's experience talking. <laughs> okay. And and by annealing, um, just making the brass softer. Right, just heat it red hot and then, then quench it in water. And as you said, that brings us yet to die number four. Which is a bottom flattening die. Okay, so after it's rounded, it flattens and forms the cup. Yeah, just flattens off the bottom. That's about all it does. Very neat. And then after that, uh, you just swap out the bottom flattening punch for the core seating punch. Is all you have to do is swap the bottom punch out, or the top punch, excuse me, just swap the top punch out and uh, seat your core in there. And then uh, that'll, that'll, that seats the core. So you take the core that you made from the first die, set it down inside the cup, and you run it through that? Yes. With the second punch? With the second so punch. So it's a two on one die? Same die, yes. Correct. And that would be the end result? Of course, that would be after you clean the, clean the cases up real good in my sonic cleaner to get everything, all the oils out of it. And then I actually cleaned the lead cores in my sonic cleaner also to I get so I get a very good bond between the soft lead and the inside of the, the copper jacket. And again forty one forty pre hard? Yes. Now this sits in the press like this. This is the bottom, this is the top that screws into the press. Correct. And this is the bottom punch. Bottom punch. And this goes into the ram of the press. Correct. So, you would sit the jacket with the core on it, run it up in. Sorry, this one. This, this one. Core. And this one will push the core into the jacket, which will also bring it to the diameter that you need. It bumps it out to about three, five, three. It bumps it out just a little bit, and the last bump out will be on your nose forming die. And everything comes out of the top then. Yes. You just remove yes. this and take the seed core out. Mm -hmm. 
And this was the die that you was telling me you did not actually make the die, but you made the punches. I made the punches, yes. That that die come from uh, Larry Blackman with the press. Uh, I was on a different, I was trying to make a uh, uh, scraper, those scrapers, soft lead bullets with the scrapers on the bottom of them. So uh, he had punches made for that, and then I didn't, I couldn't get them to work, so. I just used, went in and used his point forming die that made my own a little bit bigger hollow point punch. And uh, the die he made me for the bottom uh, top punch had a little divot in it for the, uh, to, to, to uh, put a little spot of lead on the bottom of the, ga the little checks, gator checks to hold them on. And all of these are used exclusive in the uh, BSSB press by Larry Blackman. Correct, correct. And the end product is a nine millimeter bullet 120 grains 120 grain hollow point that's some very impressive work i appreciate it now <clears throat> a lot of you is probably saying wow that's a lot of work um i know i can say for myself and you know bill if you agree or not yes it, it's a little bit of work to it but the end result um, will definitely outlast any work that you put into it because you get a quality bullet that you made yourself and you know not with the price of tooling stuff but with the actual bullet itself uh, you're probably coming out ahead in the factory I don't know about that but I like it because I can make bullets anytime I want them I can adjust the weight on them I can adjust the length of them with a couple more draw dies, I can take that same copper tubing and draw it down even more to make 308 bullets or 243 bullets. Whatever I want to make, you can make them. Once you start with any bullet that's that's less than .375 in diameter, you can make a bullet with this with this setup here. Just have to make make more draw dies and uh, of course make another uh, core maker die. And uh, but you can, once you got the roundover die. Once you got it, then you can make uh, that. That's your main, your main die there. Once you get it rounded over, you can draw it down to any size you want, any diameter you want. You can draw it down to. So you're not limited. No, no. This make is it not your all way. This will do. This is not all. This will do. I just, I have a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of stuff on the back burner. And this happens to be one of them. And like I said, you can make more dies, draw it down, make 308 bullets, whatever. Okay. Well, our next step here, we'll uh, we'll get his press set up, and if uh, Bill's into it, we'll take it through its steps and actually uh, make a bullet for you all today. What do you say? Sure. Let's have at it. <laughs> 